So there is still quite, um, a lot to play for yeah. in this election. And that's why Nigel Farage is out there trying to continue to fight to get those Conservative voters to come over to him. Yeah, and, I mean, I think a, a, a huge proportion of those people who voted for Boris Johnson's Tories for the first time in 2019 are undecided. So that's what, what they're pitching for. And we see on the front of the Telegraph today, Boris is going to be deployed by the Tories to try to counter the reform threat. He's going to do letters which will be sent out in the behind the so-called red wall. I mean, Kevin laughs. Boris Johnson is a very, very um, yeah. uh, charismatic... Effective campaigner. He really is. He won a huge majority in 2019, I Kevin. Think you know, the words that you jumped out... You want him on your side rather than not sorry, on your but side. First, the words that jumped out, uh, just listening to people, were, were social and care which is the dog that's not barking that's with true. Labour and the con Conservatives, mm. uh, as Brexit Appalling, actually. is, too, or the Liberal Democrats do have a, a, a plan. Look, Boris Johnson's going to put his name to a couple of letters. That's not going to make any difference. That's not going to shift the dial mm. anymore. The problem Sunak has, if he comes out campaigning and he appears and he gets mobbed and people say, Boris, we love you, you want to come back? They make Bor um, Rishi Sunak look even smaller. That is their mm. big problem now, although he could confront... Farage, because they were the two yeah. figureheads in the Brexit campaign. But he's not what he was, because you see in the debate, party gate comes back. People feel let down over the last five years. You've had Boris Johnson breaking, breaking uh, promises and the law, and you've had the Liz, Liz Truss crashing the economy, and then you get Rishi Sunak, who comes in, and who would be out well, of his depth in a puddle. Look, you always uh, use that cliche, Kevin. Sure. Um, Boris Johnson is a huge figure still. And he's still, yeah, there's still a lot of popularity out there. Storms. And the Tories would be delighted yeah. to have him out on the campaign trail. No, 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 but, delighted. But, but isn't the issue about what the Conservatives now are trying to do? If they are trying to, um, to shore up their base vote... They are. ..in danger of going to reform, to stop losing even more seats, Boris Johnson is a good person to have mm. out there... Absolutely. ..because he absolutely appeals to the reform Conservative cusp voter. If they're trying to reach into the middle ground to get the swing voter who might be going to the Liberal Democrats or Labour in the blue wall seats. I'm afraid Boris Johnson is a much, much less yeah, popular figure now than he was five uh, years ago. Sure. And therefore, it's probably, you know, then it makes it worse. It doesn't it's, it tell you that at the moment they think they can't win? But the fact is, reform are polling higher than the Lib Dems. So that's where they, what, that's what they fear, the Tories, the reform factor. Yes. I mean, Nigel Farage took his campaign to, into Labour heartland yesterday, Merthyr Tydfil in Wales, to show how hopeless Labour had been but running they're going to lose so. more seats yeah, to the Lib Dems than to reform, aren't they? Mm. Yes, yes, but probably they will, yes. but, yes. but, they're yes. try, but they are definitely trying to put Nigel Farage back in his box, and the one person who can do that is Boris but Johnson. By, but tra by shoring up your right flank against reform and Farage on the hard right, you vacate ground in the centre the on centre. your left flank. That's what's, that's what's and happening. And you can't it's... win elections unless you win the centre. No, and they're getting attacked from a very centrist Labour Party under Keir Starmer, and then you've got a, a hard right Farage and reform on the other side. I'm not saying it's the wrong thing no. to do. I'm just saying it's a very defensive yeah. thing to yeah. do. Well, they are on the defensive, aren't they? Nobody, right. Nobody's now talking about in Tory HQ about the Conservatives winning this general right. and, election. And it's about minimising the scale of the defeat. Merthyr and, Tid, um, Merthyr, uh, Tidville and Aberdeer, the parliamentary constituency that... Are you dying? There's a fly here. Is that coming off you? Is it like the corpse of the Tory party? Didn't seem very anyway, concerned, there was did a fly. Anyway, Didn't seem anyway, very concerned. That, that seat, that well, seat... There's no flies in Andrew. Andrew is possibly the smartest he's looked all year. Have you seen him? All year. You mean, he must be going to Trump the rest of it. He must be going to a cocktail. No, a, 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 a I went to the garden party last two weeks ago. Look, I, I think... It, Kevin wasn't like invited. That, just like that, I Kevin can imagine wasn't invited. You, I can imagine you walking the floor invited. of the department store. Anyway, I, anyway Merthyr, I think it's a bit farage Merthyr you, Tidville, that, that dress sense. Merthyr Tidville and Aberdare, which is a part of the Welsh valleys, which, yes, is economically struggling... It's just where Nigel Farage yeah, launched yeah. his it, manifesto but is, yesterday. But it, he is an anti-migrant party. That area is 97% ethnic white. What they do not need is Nigel Farage riding into town to try and stay, uh, stir up hatred against migrant As an immigrant refugees from England. Island. Yeah, well, well, a, a private schoolboy who was a city slicker and as a professional politician pretended what? to be the outsider. What well, he is he, the what's, outsider what's in that he won't understand their lives at all. What's wrong with him going to a private school? What's wrong with him going to When he goes in there, when Tony he goes Blair in there to a private pretend school. he understands Labor's their lives, no, he does Labor's not... Labour's most successful does Prime Minister went to a posh private school. Lives. What's the matter with you, Kevin? He has no This class war envy. Here it is, out again. Class war envy. He's very distant. Shall we just take you through, as viewers, what Nigel Farage 
promised yesterday. Um, he would freeze all non-essential immigration, stop the boats. Small boats would be picked up and taken back to France. All frontline NHS and social care staff would pay zero basic rate income tax. The income tax threshold for paying tax at all would be lifted to 20,000. Well, that would be eye-wateringly expensive. Um, they would cut foreign aid spending by 50%. In education, reform would introduce a patriotic curriculum in primary and secondary schools. And in welfare, enforce a two-strike rule for job seekers. So you get two offers of a job, you say no to both of them, and your benefits are withdrawn completely. He's moved on from the days the UKIP manifesto said uh, bus conductors would wear proper uniforms. But, of course... He knows and he's, he's said, look, 20,000 level at which you pay tax is a debating point. He knows it's, look, it's not worth the paper. Yeah, but the it's thing is, on, everybody criticises the threshold being stuck where yeah. it is and dragging more people mm -hmm. into And it's frozen to 2028 20, and Labour are going to carry on with the freeze. Yeah. With the Tory freeze. Yes, Labour yes, carrying exactly. on with it. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, so you criticise the Tories for having it and you criticise reform for saying they would lift it. And how are they going to get it to 20,000? Well, you know, it's not just me, it's the Institute and Fiscal Studies yeah. and everybody. You might as well say abolish income tax. Look, if, we, if you could have good public services without paying any tax, I'd say let's have that, but you can't. Yeah, but we're I talking think about in... working people um, suffering They're a cost of it. living Look, crisis this, this and is... wanting that a bigger chunk of their earned money this not is, being taxed. This, this is Liz Truss with knobs and bells and flashing lights. The, be the thing I'm intrigued about with the yep. small boats, so they're going to turn the boats round in the channel and take them back to France. So if Think France say we're not going to let the migrants back mm. on, the, on the beach, what happens then? So I heard Richard Tice, who's the chairman of um, Reform, yesterday saying, well, we'll have a row with France. How does that get them off the boat? Yeah, have a row in the sea with France. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if, that if, sounds if, like a, a and, conflict and if, you don't and, want and to start look, having. I want the boats to stop. And if it is yeah. just as straightforward as that, wouldn't the, home, hope the border force have done that already? Well, Priya Patel looked at creating a giant wave to push them back. <laughs> Right. Um, pick them up. What however, do? Oh, a look, come you know, along. there's a lot of people who are getting in touch with us uh, this morning. Winston, uh, under Labour, vote Labour, pay more tax, no thanks. Reform Party is the party of the people. Tracy, I'm voting for Nigel. He's the best of a bad bunch. Rishi Sunak has no idea about struggling in this climate. The guy is so out of touch with reality. There are children not eating, families using food banks. David, we need Nigel for this country because the Conservatives and Labour don't care about it and they've proved it over the years. Uh, Sylvia, yes, completely agree with Nigel Farage. We all know reform can't win this election, but I'm willing to live under Labour for the next five years to get reform up there mm. for next time. And now, this is interesting because yeah. it feels like this general election is a moment where the polls say Labour have got it in the bag. Yeah. So this is all about who faces a Labour government in five years' mm. time. And that's what Nigel Farage said. And he is talking quite explicitly after the election, because Labour, the Tories are certainly heading for heavy defeat. I talked to a cabinet minister yesterday who said it would be a good result if we have 160 seats. My God. So I mean, what... they had 360 to, to 2019. And Farage is looking to realign the Tory party. Take over the Tory party. Yeah. And possibly, yeah. if he wins a seat yeah. this election, be leader mm. of a merged yeah. Reform yeah. UK Tory party that is well, facing uh, the Keir Starmer... And that manifesto, although it's but, not but, costed but properly... But the Tory party splits. But, 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 but although that manifesto yeah. is not costed properly, it before. will have huge appeal to people will, watching this yeah. programme. Yeah, yeah because, because it just chucks out a whole load of separate policies that won't add up... Uh, and, he knows he doesn't have to implement. It's why it's a wish. I remember before he the 2015 do election about and it. being interviewed, um, it was on the Today programme, and being asked, um, if there was a hung parliament would you, and you won your seat, would you be willing to come in and serve as a minister? And he never wants to say yes to that, because the whole thing about Nigel Farage is he openly says, look, this is not a manifesto. I'm not going to implement any of this. The idea that any of this is actually doable, I mean, of course the sums don't add up. Of course, well, you can't send them well, there'll be no waiting list. Of course, you can't. Waiting lists are going in two years in, under the report. Entirely. Plan. Yeah. So all of what them. it what it's all about is massive destabilisation. Yeah. For um, the Conservative Party, yeah. and he's going to. But what the outcome of that will be? 
Well, he, goodness, well he, he will say when he comes on stand, I think he's got a point. There's some, that, that, a lot of this would appeal to some work, uh, Labour voters too, which is why he took his campaign yesterday to Merthyr Tidbull, a Labour heart. No, 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 no. Because a lot of Labour voters are fed up with no. high levels of immigration no. and, and how much tax well, they're paying. A lot of them. And they see li his lot are going to do nothing about it. Let's stay in the real world. Reform, do get about it. reform get most of their votes from the Conservative Party. That is why the Conservative sure. Party is suffering. He wants to enable a Labour government with a thumping majority because he wants to smash the Tory party. Then he either destroys it or takes it over or he creates a, his rival party. Mm. That's what it's all about. So he's happy to see Labour in, but he knows reform gets its vote from your party. It's why you're worried. Yeah. If, if, Kevin, if, if Kevin, reform sorry, was on I... the left, you'd be thrilled. Uh, yeah, I'm but not Kevin, worried. can I just point out, both Labour and the... Tories are accused of having sums that don't add up. Yes, yes. So when you say, look, these fantasy are economics... Are you saying they're all the same? Are you saying yes. all, every party is the same? Yeah. There's no difference? So I don't, I don't no. think... No, no, no. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I don't, I'm just I'm going. not saying I'm just, you know. that they're all... What I'm saying is the criticism is the same. Mm. So you can't just say that Reform UK's figures so you, don't add up so and therefore you, they're not credible. Because the fact of the matter is, we know Susanna, Susanna. we know Labour can't do what they want to do, Susanna. everything that they want to do and they won't on their tell current us what figures. Tax rises and we know Susanna, that the Conservatives I, I, are throwing policies out there like sweeties. I, I, and on this programme, they can't tell you how they're going to pay for them. Count Binface's uh, manifesto or contract with people add up. Is, is more well, it's probably more credible than the reform. <laughs> well, funny enough, you know, that you know, manifesto is on the front of this, the Daily Star this, this morning. Is on, this is on a different planet. It's not intended to add up, right? It's just not intended. He's, he's effectively said that. He mm. says, oh, you don't know if you can do this, don't know if you can do that. It is all intended to it's throw a grenade it's an into, into politics because he's a wrecker, mm. he's not a builder. But that's what Liz Truss says, and it is, I'm afraid it is the case. In terms of scale, the impact this would have on the size of the deficit, mm. the size of um, national debt and interest rates, I mean, it is, it is hugely bigger if it was implemented yeah. well, compared he, to the Liz Trust budget. He was, and that's why and he doesn't want to implement it. But he it. will it's, say it's not what it's about. But he says he's going to cut out waste, of course, £5 pounds in every 100 spent by, by the government mm. civil service. Across but, government spending. Yeah, but uh, we've heard this before. Well, what about the, the basic pension? Yeah. Look, look, as somebody who is frustrated on the left how financial markets globally can dictate what happens here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's annoying, but it, they're realities. You've got to deal in the real world. Mm. You've got to be pragmatic. You've got to improve people's lives in a pragmatic way. Yeah, you can dream, but you've basically got to deliver public services in some yeah. form of allowing people to go to work and earn their money. Of course, and the other nice, interesting thing in his life. manifesto, the other interesting thing, and this is the one thing which unites him now with the left of the Labour Party, um, he wants proportional representation. Yeah, cool. He wants to change the voting system because in our first-past-the-post system, yeah. unlike France or Germany, it's very hard for small parties to win. If you look at Clacton at the moment, um, the seat he's standing in, it's neck and neck between the three main yeah. parties. If of course, you had transferable votes... The three main parties being... Being reformed Conservatives and Labour in that seat. In that seat, in right. The, in that seat. I'm, I'm, I'm so with Nigel Farage that, in, on this, actually. In that seat. I think I think a party's party's vote share should roughly equate to how many MPs they have in the House of Commons. I'm not advocating. But then that breaks the link, reform. doesn't it? Yeah, well, between that, the MP well, that, and the constituency. Well, that would be the best thing that could possibly happen to Nigel Farage, because yeah, then suddenly he, there'd be loads of, of reform yeah. MPs. Whereas on the base of past elections, mm. yeah. I mean, is Nigel Farage gonna win in Clacton? Well, I don't know. Uh, he, he's, put, he's throwing everything close. at it. It is close. And if you go back to 2015, I think UKIP got four million votes, one MP. All I'm saying to you, if you are an advocate of proportional representation, yeah. that is saying I would like Nigel Farage and a big group of reform MPs mm. to be in the House of Commons in the next Parliament. Mm. No, and no, no. What I'm, what I'm saying well, that, is, that is, that is if, the if, if people vote for reform, they should get something out of yeah. the other end. Well, I don't the, want them to the, vote for reform, can, I can but if they do, I can they remember should, they back, should get Just MPs. before the 97 general election, Tony Blair was talking to the Lib Dems about electoral reform. Uh, Robin Cook was fronting for that. Paddy Ashdown, Paddy Ashdown was, Ashdown was the Lib Dem leader. He won with a majority of, what, 167? Dropped immediately by Blair because he was so far ahead, he didn't need proportional representation. And the idea that Keir Starmer, if he's going to have this huge majority, is going to change the voting system, which is going to give a majority to change, won't touch it with a bar. But, but no the, main political leader in Britain has. There's no clamour. Hang on, it was a but, condition of the coalition government, wasn't it? To have a referendum. To have a referendum on, on, AB. on it. And then David Cameron, AB. having given the referendum, which by the way is not really proportional, yeah. um, to, to Nick Clegg, then campaigns against he it. He did. 
and it was defeated. Two to one. In the end, the, um, the reason why we've never had a populist leader in this way is importantly because we have first mm. past the post. Yeah. And going to PR, I mean, I could understand the principal argument, but it opens up huge mm. problems. Mm. Nigel Farage would be would be a much much bigger political player. Yes, the, the 1931 yeah. uh, House of Commons under the Labour government, Ramsay Macdonald was Prime Minister, actually passed the alternative vote in the electoral system, but then it collapsed, so it never got through. Mm. So you had to go through you, the I vote. don't sense a great clamour from the country. Oh, we've got to change the voting system. They want bread and butter issues sorted out. But you should. Yep. But your vote. Cost of living. But your vote. Your votes. The national vote should roughly equal the number of MPs that party has in the House of Commons, and the system doesn't doesn't do it now. Labour or better benefit this time. It's lost before. At uh, the last general election, the Conservatives got one MP for far fewer votes than Labour, Labour did. But this time, Labour could get 70% of the MPs on 40% of the vote. That's, that's not fair. Uh, the, um, based on the most up-to-date polling, um, Tory big beasts, Penny Mordaunt, Jeremy Hunt, Grant Shapps, James Cleverley and Robert Jenrick could all mm. lose their seats if, according to one anti-Tory campaign vote, all voters clubbed together to oust the Conservatives and the Best for Britain is urging tactical and, voting. And at least three or four of those would have fancied their chances being the next Tory leader, not Jeremy Hunt, because he's stood well, a few times before. Jeremy Hunt has virtually conceded he's lost down there in and, uh, mm. According to those figures in that campaign, uh, Rishi Sunak himself is said to be vulnerable. Now, I'll be surprised, but you look at the figures, and his majority has gone down, and if you can squeeze all the smaller parties... Mm. Uh, <laughs> Labour, mm. but now the mayor for North Yorkshire, um, which covers... That's right, um, his batch. But that is, um, includes York, yeah. and York yeah. is a Labour council. Yeah. And I think take York out is much harder. So, you know, it would be very surprising but, you know, for Richie Sudak to lose it, that it, seat. And Nigel Farage might mention Canada today, because 1993, mm. the Canadian Tory government was crushed. They had 169 seats, went down to two. The Prime Minister lost her seat. Mm. And they were beaten by an insurgent party on the right called Reform. Let's, and and um, then what happened? Yeah. They a few years later, the, the leader of Reform with the became the new leader they did. of the new Conservative yeah. Party. That is, Nigel Farage is absolutely that, trying but it, to but replay that. But it took 20 years to get to that point sure. in Canada. Has well, Nigel got 20 years? He was a Tory. He was a Thatcherite. He let's, was in the Tory yeah. party. Let's just talk right. about a couple of other issues before we let you go. Um, uh, a care home has asked relatives to give consent for their loved ones to be referred to by terms of endearment, including dear, sweetheart and darling. Now, Andrew, you are frowning at this. <laughs> why couldn't... Why have you got to ask permission? Well, I think this is quite interesting, because I think everybody's instinctive reaction might first be, yeah, why do you have to get yeah. permission for that? Um, they've asked cons for consent forms so that staff can, t can use these variety of terms. The manager said there's been a very positive response. It was about dignity and relatives being given the choice of how they'd like their loved ones to be referred to. I actually wonder whether, for some people, you might not want your member of your family to be referred to dear, dearie, love, darling. Duck. You know, all of these... Maybe, Hilly. Maybe oh, they're loving for they're some people. They're affectionate, but they're Maybe they're patronising. Are they? Yes, and if and maybe that maybe mm. having a discussion about how would your elderly grandmother uh, mother like to be addressed yeah. is not a bad idea. And, uh, as he Definitely. frowned, I smiled and I just thought so sweet. I think it's a it's a generation which which likes those those yeah. terms and uses them. I don't think younger generations coming through will be in the same position no. for the, for all the reasons you mentioned. But I, I think it's it, it's a matter is respect and dignity and making somebody feel comfortable. Mm. And that's why I think it is good to ask and not just assume. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but you don't need to kind of sign a consent for it. Oh, for God's sake. Well, well I, I mean, don't want any legal issue down yeah, the line, but, sadly. Oh, That'll be yeah. it. I'm, I'm not sure it'd be about legal because issue. My carer called my mum darling. I'm I mean, not sure it would be a legal on. issue. More a we is you know, that... you have a new member of staff on shift and they just double check the form. Oh, my mum How would this person <laughs> maybe they'd like to be referred to as Mr. Balls at all times? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Um, <laughs> never been, no. Uh, on my mum's <laughs> care home door, there yeah. is a a, a, um, a laminated card on the door and it says, this is Carolyn, these are her grandchildren, these are the things she likes to do during the day, these are the things she likes to be, to be called. Nice. The, and and, and so, you re so anybody coming to the room yes. can read that and then knows immediately. And if, it, and if she didn't like being called you know, duck, you could write that yeah. down on the thing. Yes. And, 
and that is respectful, yes. and that is consenting. Exactly. But you don't have to sort of make it like a legalistic thing. I know, thing. legal it's contract. It's just yeah. a really good way to run a care home. So they go in. How's that How wayward is... son of yours? Has yeah. he been causing yeah. trouble what on the telly again? Yeah, no, and what's he do? And what does your mum like being called? Would your mum object to being called Duck or Love or Dear? My mum would go, why are they calling me that? There we go. You see, yes, I don't think we it's a legal contract. We moved from Norwich contract. to Nottingham and everybody would say, are you right, my duck? And my mum would say, I'm not a duck. <laughs> I don't quack. <laughs> so I, I, totally, I, I totally understand your point, which is there are some people who don't like this stuff, no. and that is fine. Mm. But you can do things in a respectful way yeah. without needing to become, you know, mm. we are asking for a consent form. It's just a nice way to yeah. behave. Yeah. Um, UEFA, uh, back to the Euros, mm. uh, investigating Still claims seen any of, the of racist chants by Serbian fans. Um, I cannot believe we are in 2024. That's horrible. At an international football yeah. tournament, and we're still getting abuse Shocking. thrown at England players. Uh, complaints of monkey chance oh, during the game. You'd thought that had gone Sunday. out with the there, there, there is still some in, in British football. <laughs> it's not gone away. Really? It's, really? There's, there's less than there was, much less than there was. And I think the majority of people yeah. now will pick somebody up on it. They're not going to ring a number or send a text. They will pick people mm. up on it. But, find but them. Serbia has a big problem. Find them. Ban them from every yep. single yep. And football game. Yep. They're never and allowed the to go to football again. the football authorities in this country again. are pretty good about that, actually. Yeah. They are. We have, we have candidates of the election who um, are saying that Hitler was misunderstood and is a good guy and that Mussolini was underrated. I mean, you know... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's um, the idea that it's all solved. Which, which party was the Hitler one? That was reform, wasn't it? Oh, God, <laughs> blimey. Yeah. They'll say uh, they've got shot of him, that's what they'll say. But the problem, the problem you have, and this was the case with Jeremy Corbyn and anti-Semitism, is you attract people. And that's what uh, Nigel Farage has to answer. Why are you attracting these people? Mm. Well, but the other thing in politics is once you get an opinion poll rating which kind of gets you competitive, suddenly scrutiny comes your way and there will be more scrutiny of reform in the next few weeks yeah. where's the money come from mm. who are their supporters who are the candidates yeah. you've got to be ready for that and the money is pouring in now well don't sure. miss the interview with nigel farage yeah, after eight o'clock and you will be back, will yeah. be back Hooray. um at 8 45. you're gonna have var when he says something and has he gone across the line? Oh, <laughs> yeah, political VAR. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, well, you are our political VAR, actually, you. you two, aren't you? Yeah. You're our referees in Stockley no, Park. No, they're more popular than that. <laughs> yes. Hang on, hang on, it was approved by 19 out of 20 clubs in the oh, Premier League. Mm. I think we take that level. I apologise, I love VAR. Yeah.